What's up everybody, Derek Pascarella, otherwise known as A-Team, here with uh, another little VM2 video, a little update on a very exciting brand new feature. Um, as of version 1.2.8 of the firmware, as you can see, I've got it installed here on my unit. Not yet public as of the time I'm recording this video, but what makes this update so exciting is that in conjunction with the open source GDMU menu software called Open Menu, we now have automatic virtual VMU switching, just like the MemCard Pro on PlayStation, PlayStation 2, etc. Um, this feature is now live and soon to be public for all of you Dreamcast fans out there who have a, a VM2. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's get the card inserted in the controller. Boot up our console here. And we will be taken into the open menu software. Now, for those who don't know a whole lot about open menu, um, it's definitely uh, not as popular presently as, you know, the standard traditional GD menu software uh, that most have been using for the last X number of years. Uh, however, as you can see, open menu is pretty sexy and very customizable. And best of all, it is completely open source. It is a project that was started by Hayden Kowalchuk, AKA Mr. Neo 240. And it has since been picked up by Megavolt 85, the same Megavolt that brought us all those fantastic Atomos Wave conversions. Um, I'll put some links in the video description um, for where you can you know, obtain the software itself, um, you know, any, any relevant support threads that could help you get started, etc. But essentially here, I've got a you know, few hundred games loaded. And what will happen is that upon selecting a game, Let's head on down to, how about, we'll go Dead or Alive 2. Upon selecting a game, if you have a VM2 inserted in your controller on a, uh, you know, on the, on the latest uh, firmware build or a firmware build that supports automatic virtual VMU switching, launching this game will send a call over, hitting the VM2 API to basically say, hey, um, create a virtual memory card folder and a virtual you know, memory card or virtual VMU inside that folder if one doesn't already exist. If it does exist, go ahead and load it up. So by launching Dead or Alive 2, we see a message here, creating game.vmu created. Go ahead and skip our boot intro here, or rather just try to speed it up. And now, Coming on into the game itself, yes, we want to create save data, fantastic. We'll just go and change an option and save it maybe. We'll put it on easy. and we'll overwrite any existing save data, which there really isn't any, and uh, okay. Now we've saved. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and uh, reboot the console. Now, from within Open Menu itself, if you'd like to access the um, you know, the virtual VMU for a particular game, it's, it's quite easy if you want to do, you know, file management in the BIOS. Let's say you want to copy files to and from an original uh, VMU. So say, for example, we'll return on down to Dead or Alive 2. Um, I've got a few options actually worth mentioning. If I hit B on the controller, I can actually run Code Breaker, which is similar to GameShark, directly from open menu, it'll actually launch Code Breaker, 
with a pre-populated list of cheats that essentially represents the exhaustive collection of, of action replay, game shark, code breaker style cheats for the entire library, which is really, really cool. Uh, we won't do that though. Uh, if we hit Y, we get an option to exit to the BIOS, which we'll do. And when we do that, we can actually see it said VMU loaded. Now you might be at this stage wondering, what am I looking at? This is not a traditional Dreamcast BIOS and I really don't remember my Dreamcast BIOS letting me do that. <laughs> but you may be familiar with the fact that uh, one of the Puyo Puyo games, um, I think the old trick was you, you, uh, you just created a save file on your VMU from that game and uh, as long as that file was present on the VMU, you actually had access to this alternative or secret BIOS. For nostalgia reasons, I'm actually a big fan of the original, but this is pretty cool because it does afford us some extra features. And I'll get into that in a second. But let's go into our VMU here. And as we can see, there is our standalone Dead or Alive 2 VMU with our save file. Now, let's say we wanted to navigate and check out some of these virtual VMUs. If I hit the function key, I'll scroll back up, and we can actually see that inside of this folder, this virtual VMU folder, we see the game title up top, which is really cool. If you go back to my main directory listing, let's go on down to this one here. We can see as the name scrolls, Vigilante 8, great. So it's quite easy to find your, um, you know, your actual uh, uh, saves uh, by name. Let's load up my base VMU, just one that I use for some testing. As you can see, it's completely empty because I'm really not doing a whole lot with it. Now I did mention extra features of this BIOS. So some of you might be familiar with the fact that some Dreamcast save files are copy protected. Things like Fantasy Star Online or even the uh, network key and settings for something like Daytona USA, which thanks to you know dedicated uh, network reverse engineers, uh, we've actually got online again using uh, DreamPy, which is really, really awesome. But let's go ahead and return to open menu and I actually want to copy the copy protected Daytona USA network settings and keys from my you know, OEM VMU to my VM2, to my virtual VMU for Daytona USA. So I'll show everybody that working here. So let's open up Daytona USA. This is the arcade soundtrack modification, same exact thing, um, but we'll just hit Y. We'll exit to the BIOS. We saw a message VMU loaded. Nothing in here. I'll go ahead and insert my OEM VMU. Ah, the classic beep, who doesn't love it? Okay, so inside of my other VMU here. Now these two settings, Daytona USA key, and Daytona USA, ordinarily, uh, these would be outlined in red, meaning copy protected, can't be moved from one VMU to the other. So the really cool thing here is that as you start to take any of your save files that live on, you know, traditional OEM VMUs and, and copy them to the virtual VMUs, anything that's copy protected, it's no problem. You know, you don't have to lug out that, that old VMU just for that copy protected data. So we'll go ahead and actually copy this guy right here. And as we can see, working without issue. So I love this. I think this is absolutely fantastic. Sure, there's other methods to um, unlock uh, these copy protected save files, but this just makes it so friggin' easy. Absolutely incredible. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the gist of what we've got here using the newest VM2 firmware and the um, latest version of OpenMenu. 
Real quick though, we'll uh, shift on over to the computer because I just want to show you a little breakdown of what the SD card looks like with all of these folders and virtual VMUs. All right, so I've got my micro SD inserted into the computer here, and as we can see, we've got all of these serial IDs or game IDs uh, that have now been turned into folders. And inside of them, we have both a virtual VMU file and a title text file. Now, if we wanted to see the contents of the title text file, of course, it is a plain text file. But it is going to be appended with all of this null data if you look at it inside of a text editor. You can, of course, still tell you know, which game it's for, Daytona USA. Opening it up in a hex editor might be a little nicer because uh, all of those null bytes are less jarring. Um, but this data, not only can you, of course, just at a glance look and see um, you know, which uh, virtual VMU this game belongs to, but in an upcoming update to the VM2 GUI software, the software that you run on your computer to do things like firmware updates, etc., there will be a browser or manager, uh, something that will let you sift through all of your um, per game virtual VMUs and, and see uh, the contents of them and and all of that. So it'll be very seamless, very intuitive, and uh, very easy to use. But um, as of right now, this is the first hardware solution um, to you know, provide virtual, um, you know, automatic virtual VMU switching. I will note that this did exist previously with uh, Dream Shell, which is an, uh, you know, an option if you'd like to use the serial SD card reader, which is, you know, not a way to play back a good portion of the retail software library. But of course, if you use the, you know, the hard drive mod, um, you can use Dream Shell very successfully. That had virtual VMU switching automatic virtual VMU switching um, at least I'm gonna say at least six months ago from the time of recording this it could be could be longer could be shorter <laughs> I don't remember exactly um, but this I say is the first hardware solution in the sense that you know we are saving to a physical VMU even if it is just you know an aftermarket um, you know recreation um, it really is the definitive way to, to do all of this also worth noting, Megavolt 85, since he's been implementing this type of stuff, also released um, schematics and firmware for a small um, USB dongle um, that you can build yourself, or you can actually buy one from Dreamcast Live, aka you know our good friend PC Wizard. I'll put all these links in the video description, and that will allow you to not only use things like um, you know USB controllers. I think it would, would support like your typical Xbox controllers, you know, PlayStation controllers. Um, you can even achieve dual analog for the few Dreamcast games that support it. But on top of that, if you plug a USB hub into it with a thumb drive, it'll actually uh, do this uh, automatic virtual VMU switching if you're using Open Menu. Um, so there's a you know, number of different avenues one could travel down if they uh, you know, want this type of feature. Although, of course, um, the VM2 is definitely the coolest way to get it, right, guys? Anyway, that wraps up our video for today. I hope uh, this short, low-production, Derek-style video was entertaining, or the very least, informative uh, for those of you who have been waiting for this feature, or who maybe are learning about it for the very first time today. You can expect that firmware update to be released publicly soon. And um, until next time... That's it. That's all, and have a great day.